This is a Hyundai? So hello guys, welcome back to my channel and finally I have with me the 2024 Hyundai Santa Fe and this is the base model GLS two-wheel drive variant and I really cannot believe this is the all new Santa Fe and this is just the base model. For me, this is already our complete SUV. We will get to that in a bit. So I'd like to thank everyone here at Hyundai Manila Bay and to Miss Lizelle for making this walk around tour possible and hopefully test drive soon of the Santa Fe models. I just wanted to start with this uh, base model. I cannot believe the design change from that then into this one. This is the N MX-5 generation. Let's see too if this will drive like an MX-5. Kidding aside, so despite to being a base model, you still get LED lights all around but not the crazy ones you get in the middle trim and the calligraphy variant. I checked out the calligraphy variant too in Gloriette. It was such a beautiful car, I must say. So despite its boxy nature and a look-alike, let's not make, take this away, this looks like a Land Rover Defender. So you get a ground clearance of 177mm which to be honest, I expected a little bit more since this has a rugged look now. So despite to being a base model, you start with 20 inch wheels. So it will go bigger as you go up the uh, higher variants too. So you get LED repeaters too with cameras underneath, Santa Fe garnishes all around. And what I like too with all of the Santa Fe's, I don't see any chrome here whatsoever. Everything is blacked out. Yes, you have cladding here and there. However, I don't mind it since it's a crossover anyways. And again, look at the side profile, 50 millimeters longer too than the previous Santa Fe model and the design of this just works and as well being the base model, you get roof wheels all around and now this is where things get interesting too. So buying this all new Hyundai Santa Fe, you get gas struts too. So gun is the older 2.2 liter turbocharged four cylinder diesel engine. New Santa Fe models now are powered by two and a half liter naturally aspirated four cylinder engine. This base model produces 194 horsepower and 246 newton meters of torque. So this is the same too with the middle trim variant. However, if you go up all the way to the calligraphy variant that has a turbocharged version of this engine. And now I notice too here in the engine bay, this still uh, is designed in tune with a crossover because the engine is way hunkered down in the chassis itself. So I was expecting to be a little bit higher since this has the rugged look once again. And I, I couldn't help myself, there's a lot of Kia badges here too, Hyundai Kia badges too rather. Since this as well shares the same platform with the Kia Sorento and hopefully I will review that soon too because that car has a lot of catching up to do now with the Santa Fe. And again, this is just the base model. Still walking, still walking, still walking. I'm reviewing a lot of long and big cars recently, huh? So anyway, this is the rear of the all new Hyundai Santa Fe. Again, a lot of more of the Land Rover Defender vibes. You have bigger badges here on the rear and LED lights. They're not the bottom-ish signal lights and tail lights because it kind of sits high anyways. And I'm not able to open the boot because this car, specific car is low but sadly. However, we're able to open the boot earlier on. So this is the space with all of the seven seats up. So this is around like 200 liters. You get a 12 volt socket on the left side and once you fold the third row down, it increases to 725 liters. And it already beats the boot space of the previous gen with just the third row down. And finally, if you fold all of the seats down too, probably increases to around 1200 to 1300 liters of space. So yeah, that's about it with the exterior, the engine, and the boot of this Hyundai Santa Fe. Let's check out where things are get a lot more interesting now in the interior. This is the interior of this all-new Hyundai Santa Fe. I may mean a Land Rover or Hyundai. <laughs> but the biggest uh, cue from Land Rover, well actually this thing well, looks more like a Land Rover Evoque rather than a Land Rover Defender. But it's still nice to look at. So all of this design of the steering wheel, uh, carries throughout the uh, lineup. So here in the door card you get nice silver trims and, and a wood and a wooden trim too and leather all around this vehicle. Cubby spaces, cup holders on either side. My big water jug kind of fits but you have to squeeze it a bit just for it to enter. <laughs> anyway, so another specialty too with a uh, Hyundai Santa Fe is you get paddle shifters all around. So your buttons here. So on the left side you get your cruise control functions and instrument cluster adjustments on the left side and on the right side you get your phone connectivity buttons and I cannot help just staying at this interior because 
it looks so good and you have a lot of H patterns. So to two straight types. I think there were 74 H patterns all around this vehicle. Mm -hmm. Yes. There's a lot of H team and hexagonal uh, stuff here with this Hyundai Santa Fe in and out. So here in the left side of the dashboard you get your wooden trim, your air conditioning vent. You only get one black button but at least for you have for your electronic tailgate, electronic stability control and your electronic parking brake too. So there's no more physical one or the button is not located here anymore in the middle. And weirdly now, like with the Ionic 5 and the Ionic 6 models, this is your gear selector. So it's a like a flick of a switch, very similar now like with Mercedes uh, Benz product. But I am a big fan of this, as I mentioned with the Ionic 5 and Ionic 6 models. So here, instrument cluster and infotainment system, sadly, that I will demo that for another time. But I will be looking forward to moving uh, the higher models after this base model. So dashboard all round, it looks really good. A lot of uh, nice wooden trim, squeegee material all round. So Hyundai really need everything here already with this Hyundai Santa Fe. So not gonna lie, we're only here in the front row. I really kind of want one. So hopefully we will know in the future if I ever get one. So further down here in the middle, you get your engine start stop button, your electronic climate control function. So a little bit similar to with the previous uh, Santa Fe but a little bit more compressed now and fewer buttons so I think most of your adjustments will be done in the infotainment system so you get your driving modes here auto hold and parking sensors hill descent control button too and way further behind here where my hand is you get two pads for your phone but at least you have a wireless charging pad itself two USB-C ports and you can even see how much uh, charge your phone has already depending on the phone too Further down, you get a very large cubby space, a 12-volt socket, and here on the right side of the dashboard, like with Land Rovers, I think some of them only, so you have a double glove box, so you have one here above, with a decent amount of space, and way further down, an extra cubby space, and a glove box itself. Okay, the glove box is kinda wee, so I wish it was a little bit bigger, and back here, you get two cup holders, this is where my big water jug can fit, at least, and here, center console box. Okay, you get a decent amount of space. There's a light as well inside. So we will get back to this once we go to the second row. Seats here, despite being a base model, it's leather all around and they're only black. So I think you can get uh, other colors, if not mistaken, only in the higher trims. So the calligraphy, I, what we sat in was brownish, if not mistaken. I really love that calligraphy. But for me, having a budget, I would, I'm happy already with this base model. We will get to the prices too in a bit. So above here, you get a sunroof too for exclusive for the front row only. And then here, buttons for your LED lights and sunroof controls too. Visor, you get a vanity mirror with an LED light, I assume. So, I know this already. <laughs> because it is the same in the Kia Sorento. I think. It's been a while since I reviewed that vehicle. Anyway. So that's about here in front of this Hyundai Santa Fe. Let's talk about the better things with the practicality in the second row. Finally, here in the second row. Oh, it may head a bit, but you can move this still forward be again because this specific car is long. But, but the space in here, even with the sunroof, there's another sunroof here, by the way. It's like that. Wow, what, a, what an upgrade from the previous generation. Well done, Hyundai. Yeah, you can fit what? I think even six of me here in the rear. That's how taller, wider, and longer this all new Hyundai Santa Fe is. So behind both seats, so behind both front seats, you get the H patterns once again, and grossing hooks all around too, map pockets too on either side, and here in the middle, you can access the center console box here too, so it opens the other direction too. And what I like here, so you have an extra cubby space down here below, which actually connects to, to the center console box, so you can further increase it. That's pretty amazing. You can fit like a whole emperor in the uh, in the console box itself. So reminder, don't take and drive, just only for storage. And like that of the Kia Sorento, which this shares the same platform, you get two USB-C ports on either side of the seats. I found this really handy too when I drove the uh, Kia Sorento. And two, as you can notice now, you get H-pattern air conditioning vents again here on either side of the B-pillar. Really similar now like with European brands in general. And seats here too, despite being a base model, it's all leather, a lot more H-patterns here than usual. You get a central armrest with two cup holders, sadly it does not fit my big water jug. Wait, 
Yung Dag Manila Bay, I'll, I'll put this back, right? Yeah, that's the generation code of the Santa Fe MX-5. So very cool, you can see it here uh, before you take all of the stickers out. So I'll put you back here because I don't have any trouble. And despite to this car specific car being low bat, uh, how do you access the second row? By the way, you can fold the second row using two buttons there at the rear. So folding down the third row, it's conventional push and pull with the rope and Two, you can store your tonneau cover underneath. You can extend it all the way up and act it like as a cover or a shade. Very similar now like with that of all the vehicles. Okay, sorry, I keep mentioning a lot of European brands because, I mean, they're present all over this car. I am very amazed. You all know me, I'm a bit of a Euro fan too. And to this base model, it's manual adjustments for the seats. If not mistaken only, since I've not seen the calligraphy and the middle trim, variants properly, I think you can fold them and slide them forwards and backwards electronically. So this one's all manual. I don't mind it since I'm old school. So there's an extra button here too, so you can access the uh, third row very easily. But in case, again, like now, it's slow, but you can do it manually and go to the third row immediately. So here now in the third row, I've not adjusted the seat. So I have just enough feet room. Knee room is pretty good and headroom. Ooh. So even somewhat larger adults and larger kids can fit here in the back. I think best around 5'8", five 5'9", five as long as you don't have long legs. You can fit here in the back quite easily and you can fit at least four of me if needed only. But I think even three would be doable here in the third row. Yeah, another big surprise here with this all new Hyundai Santa Fe. So more toys here in the back. You get an LED light, air conditioning vent, a USB-C port and two cup holders too on either side and here on the right side you get again the same layout but your rear AC controls are located here on the right side so yeah wow what a very big upgrade it is on you here in Santa Fe so this base model cost 2,410,000 pesos so fun fact there are still older Santa Fe models still available but this base model still cost 10,000 pesos less which is hilarious and this Santa Fe tops out if you get the calligraphy top of the line model at 3,100,000 pesos again there is a middle trim of this which is exactly the same of this albeit it's an all-wheel dive version so Hopefully we can drive this base model and the all-wheel drive back to back and check out hopefully soon the calligraphy model. So yeah, that concludes my walk-around tour of this Hyundai Santa Fe GLS front-wheel drive base model. So I'd like to thank everyone here again at Hyundai Manila Bay and to Miss Lizelle for making this walk-around tour possible. So, hope you guys like and subscribe and I will see you with the test drives of this coming soon. Bye-bye.